Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make these car coasters. The pattern for this is free if you'd like to see a written version of it. It's on my blog. Just click on the link in the video description. I'm also going to show you a few different ways of packaging these like with these wraps. So stick around to the end and you can see how I package them. So let's go ahead and get started. For this pattern we're going to start with a magic adjustable ring and we're going to go ahead and do nine half double crochets into that ring starting with a chain one. I like to pull up my chain just slightly so it's about the height of a half double crochet and then I'm going to go ahead and do my nine half double crochets into the ring. When you complete your last half double crochet, you're going to pull that yarn tail to close the ring and then join in the round using a slip stitch. And now we're going to start round two, which is going to be two puff stitches. Oh, sorry, we start with a chain one and then we're going to do two puff stitches into this space in between each of the half double crochets. So right here. So you're going to yarn over, insert into that space between the half double crochets, grab your yarn, you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into that same space, grab the yarn, you should have five loops on your hook, and then we're gonna grab the yarn, draw it through all five loops. We will not do a chain one to close the stitch, we're just gonna go ahead and complete a second puff stitch into that same half double crochet space, and we're gonna repeat that all the way around, doing two puff stitches into each of the spaces between each of the half double crochets. Oh, that was a lot to say. I'll meet you guys back at the end of this round. Here we are now at the end of round two and we're gonna go ahead and join this round using a slip stitch just at the top here of um, the first puff stitch. And then to start this round, we're gonna use a chain one and then we're going to increase again so that we end with 27 puff stitches and we're gonna do them into the spaces in between each of the puff stitches. So we're gonna complete our first puff stitch is one puff stitch into that first space and then in the next space between the two puff stitches, we're gonna do two puff stitches and then we're gonna go ahead and repeat that same sequence with one puff stitch into the first space and then two puff stitches into the next space. And I'll go ahead and meet you guys back when I get to the beginning of the last round, which I call the finishing round. Here we are now at the end of round three and we're gonna go ahead and join this round using a slip stitch into the top of the very first puff stitch. After you finish round three, you might notice some curling, which is normal in this pattern. We're gonna fix that when we do the finishing round, which is going to be slip stitching into the top of each of the puff stitches. In this round, we're going to be adding the pull tab so for the finishing round, which is the last round of the pattern, we're going to be loosely slip stitching into the top of each of the puff stitches. I like to add the tab when I get to maybe the 13th slip stitch, so I'll go ahead and meet you guys back when I get to slip stitch 13. Now is the time to add the little tag, which I call a little pull tab. We're gonna fold it in half, and you're gonna work it into one of the normal slip stitches. So insert, just as you normally would, into the top of the puff stitch, and insert into the holes on the little tag. Grab your yarn and pull it through both the tag and the top of the puff stitch. You see it adds it onto the back there, and then you're going to draw the yarn through to finish that slip stitch. And then you're just gonna adjust if needed so that it's lined flat, and then you're gonna complete the rest of the slip stitches for the round by inserting into the top of each of the puff stitches and you're gonna do that until you get back to the beginning. Once you have your last slip stitch in that round finished, you're gonna trim your yarn. And for this, we're gonna use our darning needle to finish off the round with a seamless join by doing a duplicate stitch over the top of the very first slip stitch that you did for that round. So I'm just gonna kinda show you how I do that and then I'm gonna weave in the ends on the back side and I'm just gonna show all of that process without a voiceover. So I'll see you guys when I'm all done weaving in my ends.
This is the back side. I do think it's pretty cute, and I kind of think you could use either the front or the back. I would just put my tab on the top here if I was going to be showing the back side as the front side, if that makes any sense. But we're going to make two of these because most cars have two cup holders and that would need these little car coasters and then I thought I would show you guys just kind of how I wrap these I'm just going to show you the process of using a wrap and then I have a folding card and I also have a little tag that you could tie the coasters with a ribbon so I'm just going to show you that and I'll meet you back at the end with a couple of tips on um, how to do the folding card and the little tag so enjoy me packaging these coasters I just wanted to show you guys a couple of tips on folding a cardstock card. After you fill out all of the care information here, I like to use just a felt tip pen to fill in little bubbles with my washing info and then also with my fiber content. And I also put info on what the tag was made out of. But to fold these cards, you do want to use something to kind of help guide you to make a nice, clean, and crisp fold. And I find that just by kind of maybe it's burnishing, I'm not really sure what the term is for that, with a straight edge along that line that I have here. So you're just gonna use some kind of straight edge, like a ruler, and I just find using a crochet hook because it has kind of just a rounded tip. You just run it along that line that I have pre-printed on there, and then you can see like a little bit of an indent, and then it'll just fold along that line nice and clean. And it just makes it easier to fold it. You can do a whole bunch of them at the same time. And then I'll just show you how I finished packaging these in there. And then I'm gonna add a little hole. And if you don't have a tiny hole punch, you can actually just use like a darning needle. If you have a metal yarn needle that's kind of got a wide eye on it, and then something like cardboard or cork board, you just push through in the center at the top, push the needle through, and then I just kind of twirl it to give it a nice rounded little um, finish. And it makes a nice clean hole, which will be perfect for attaching using one of these bulb safety pins. And then I will go ahead and show you the rest of the way I package this and then how I also package with a little ribbon. The last printable in the set is just a tiny tag, and how I usually do these is I just tie a ribbon around two coasters, I tie it with a square knot, and then trim the ends, and then I add the little tag. So I'm just going to kind of show that process really quickly, and then I'll show you guys how I put the car coasters to use. Now let's take the car coasters and put them in the car. These car coasters are not only super cute, but they're functional. They keep your cup holders clean of dust and crumbs. And because they're made with a cotton yarn, they're absorbent and they can help keep the cup holders nice and dry. And they are just absolutely so cute. Just look at them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this pattern a fun one. If you need more information like the written pattern, you can find a link in the video description to my blog post that has more information in it. And don't forget, please like and subscribe. Thanks again.